he, I think, holds our highest standard of leadership, which is being a leader of consequence. So without further ado, Kevin. Thank you very much, Dean Bolding, and to the faculty, to the program staff, the honored guests, the student speakers, amazing job, Julian, William, Fiasu, thank you so much. And to the friends, the families, the cousins, the brothers, the sisters, the dads, and I'm glad to hear all the special thanks that have gone out to the moms and celebrating you tomorrow as well. It certainly takes a village to get to this moment in time to make it this far. And especially to you, the Fuqua MBA graduates, class of 2018, I want to begin by saying thank you. I'm incredibly honored to be here with you today. And as Dean Bolding said, I do say that, especially as a Maryland grad. And while it was never quite UNC, we had a special thing between our schools as Kevin White would probably agree that we'd probably refer to as spirited. I am thrilled and honored to have this opportunity to talk to you, and it is important that we tell you a story. So to the graduates, to Team Fuqua, well, you now have this shiny new MBA, and a few of you have a PhD. Congratulations. That is an amazing accomplishment. You should be very very proud. We salute you. We congratulate you. We honor you. We, we celebrate you today. Your official days as a student may be over, but I promise you, your learning will continue on. And a lot of what you did here at Fuqua is learn how to learn. And I believe that might maybe just the most important skill that you're going to have in life, and I ask you to take that away today. You're going to continue to learn the rest of your life. You're going to learn from your families. You're going to learn from your friends, your communities, your experiences, and of course, your career. But just as important is how you learn and what you take away from each one of those lessons that occurs. And I speak here today from experience, and it is that experience that I want to share with you today, and for the record, some of the lessons, because I don't have all of the answers. I too am still learning at this stage of my life, and oh man, am I still learning. But I do have a pretty good story so far. And that story, along with a few of those very hard-earned lessons, is what I want to share with you today. So I'll begin by telling you about the company that I started 22 years ago and lead still today, Under Armour. Our company exists because of three essential things that allow us to live and breathe. Entrepreneurship, defiant belief, and passion. Under Armour started with a simple idea. I was a football player at the University of Maryland. And when we practiced or played games, we all wore a standard gray loose cotton t-shirt underneath of our equipment. And I noticed that as I sweated, that shirt became wet, it got heavier and heavier. After practice one day, I actually weighed one of those shirts, and it came out to being three pounds. I was never the star of the team, so I was always looking for an edge, some way to improve and get more playing time. And it was in my dorm room that I actually came up with an idea for a totally different kind of a t-shirt, one that was synthetic, stretchy, light, tight, resistant to sweat. I had a prototype made and soaked it in water, put it on a scale, and it weighed all of seven ounces. Life's about making things better. So I had this idea, and this is frankly where entrepreneurship comes into play in our lives. Entrepreneur, it's a word that literally means a bearer of risk. It describes a person who has an idea and is ready and willing to act on it. I decided to bear the risk back in 1996, coming out of college with not really sure what it would mean. I started a company around that new t-shirt, and I knew that shirt was better than anything that was out there in the marketplace. I knew that it would make athletes better. It would improve lives. I like to say that I was smart enough to be naive enough to not know what I could not accomplish. 
naivete can be a blessing. Why not me? Why not us? Why not you sitting there right now today, dreaming, visioning, and bringing to life what you believe is your destiny? And so for me, I had no experience in the sporting goods world. Of course, I had only a tiny amount of money, and there were certainly no banks or investors lining up to give me theirs. And so let me dispel one thing that you might have heard of things like the friends and family round. Don't be surprised when they don't show up. That's mostly true for me, but like many of you will find, I did have a lot of help. I had an amazing family and an amazing team. I was the youngest of five boys growing up. My mother was a working woman serving as the mayor of our hometown. My father was a land developer who died when I was just 20 years old. I didn't have a specific mentor that I leaned on. I had no business plan. There was no roadmap. I had to learn as I went along. Let me pause here for a moment to underscore how important entrepreneurship is for businesses, for our nation, for this world, and for you personally. One of the most important things that you can do now at the start of this newest, greatest chapter in your life is to see yourself as an entrepreneur because, well, you are. We all are. We all have ideas. We are all the authors of our own stories. We can all make ourselves better. We can all make those around us better. We all bear risk, which is about what you're going to do. Entrepreneurship is infused in everything that we do, not just in our businesses and jobs, but it's in our everyday lives. And as the students here know, but to some of the family who's visiting, the namesake of this school, J.B. Fuqua himself was an entrepreneur. And as a teenager, he educated himself by requesting books from the Duke University Library to be mailed to his farm. He actually has credited Duke's lending program with enabling him to learn about business. How cool is that? How important is that? Understanding what that means in today's world. And of course, you all had to be entrepreneurial just to get into Fuqua. And then of course, to get through it. And as Jason LaRose, who runs our North American business at Under Armour, who is a graduate, explained to me, yes, you, in order to come from here, in order to learn how to pronounce the name, it is understood that few do qualify. <laughs> Entrepreneurship is all around us, and it's the duty of all of us to encourage it and to support it. And one of my favorite examples of that encouragement and support are things as simple as a lemonade stand that kids set up in the summertime. Hear me now. I want to give a golden rule before each and one of you leave, a bit of gospel that I've preached before, that when you're driving down the road, when you're on your bike, when you're going for a run or a walk, and you see a lemonade stand, drop everything you're doing, pr pr proceed directly to it, and buy lots and lots of lemonade, because that is entrepreneurship at its best, and it should be encouraged, and it should be celebrated. Talk to those kids. Listen to them. And as I explained to my kids, when they used to set up their own lemonade stands, the $14 that they grossed is not actual profit when I'm the one supplying the cups, the lemonade, and the ice. <laughs> you ever heard of drayage, shipping, manufacturing costs, let alone the federal government are getting into taxes? Uncle Sam gets a cut as well. My point is that there's a good lesson there. There's a great lesson there that speaks to what we all do. Encourage them. After all, these kids, these little kids, they are just like you. They are entrepreneurs. But it's not always easy to bear the risk. Under Armour's first office was actually in the moldy basement of my grandmother's Georgetown Row House in Washington, D.C., where a small group of us worked nearly around the clock in those early days, taking orders over the phone, stitching shirts, packing and shipping boxes. I maxed out six credit cards going into deep financial debt while desperately searching for more funding that never showed up. In our first two years, I drove an old Ford Explorer more than 100,000 miles back and forth across this country. That's the equivalent of four times around the world, trying to convince people to wear and buy and try our shirts. We survived those early days because of the second thing I mentioned earlier. We did so because of defiant belief. This is something you should listen to. What is it? What is defiant belief? It's the belief in a wildly ambitious goal and in one's ability. It's the belief that things can be changed, that things can be made better. This defiant belief fueled our growth. 
Early days turned into heady days, and we began to grow at a dizzying rate. We entered into contracts with sports teams and universities. We expanded our product line, moving into women's apparel and eventually footwear. We hit the $100 million mark, then the billion dollar mark, two billion, and today over $5 billion. We signed athletes like Tom Brady, Lindsey Vaughn, Jordan Spieth, Misty Copeland, Cam Newton, Stephen Curry, and so many more great ones. Our 2005 IPO was the most successful one Wall Street had seen in five years. And from 2010 to 2016, we'd had 26 straight consecutive quarters of 20 plus percent top line growth. And in 2015, we grew over 28 percent. That's nearly added a billion dollars in a single year. We'd had the four MVPs in the country's four biggest sports under endorsement. And our 21 year old golfer and a guy named Jordan Spieth won the Masters and the US Open that year. We were on top of the world and we were grinding so hard trying to reach that next milestone that it occurred to us that it may be time to pause, to give ourselves the time to take a breath, to reflect, to really listen and to learn. So it happened. Our growth streak ended, compounded by a number of factors, including macro retail challenges in North America, our largest market, shifting consumer preferences, inefficiency stemming from the years of growth that we'd compounded on top of each other, and this is where truly the real learning began to happen. We don't need you when it's easy. We need you when it's tough. The credit, as Teddy Roosevelt once said, belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, who spend themselves in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if they fail, at least fails while daring greatly so that their place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Defiant belief. That's what keeps the fighter in the ring, the gladiator in the arena, the team on the field. As a gladiator in ancient Rome, the arena was a wonderful place when you're winning. You're adored by the crowd. But get maimed, take a fall, or worse, the crowd would turn on you in the blink of an eye. Defiant belief allows us to challenge the doubters and the system and sustains us during our lows and the lulls. We've seen this time and time again through our athletes at Under Armour. That is the beautiful metaphor of sports. As I mentioned before, Jordan Spieth winning the 2015 Masters in record-breaking fashion. The next year, he was leading the tournament on the back nine of the final day by five strokes, and then he dunked the ball in the water twice on number 12. He ended up finishing second. And Jordan tells me that more people want to talk to him about his second place finish than his historic victory from the year before. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> Lindsey Vaughn is perhaps the greatest ski racer, male or female, of all time. She was cheered for her 82 World Cup wins and her Olympic medals. And she was jeered for her falls and injuries in her pursuit. She actually missed the 2014 Olympics and critics pronounced her done. Yet she stayed in the arena, fueled by the critics and the naysayers, and it paid off with another Olympic medal at the 2018 Games. This is a good one. Coming out of high school, the one that got away. Stephen Curry wasn't even recruited by his father's alma mater, let alone Duke, although you did get his brother. So he went to Davidson instead a small school without much of a basketball tradition, and he wound up taking them to the Elite Eight. Coming out of college, there were somehow still plenty of doubters who thought that he was too fragile or too small to play in the NBA. And today, Stefan has two NBA championships and two NBA MVPs, and one of those MVPs being unanimous, never done before in league history. This year, he was slowed down by a knee injury that held him out for more than 11 weeks. And through relentless hard work and faith, Stefan has proved all the doubters wrong once again. And he has said many times through his journey, be the best version of yourself in anything you do. You do not have to live anybody else's story. Defiant belief, where obstacles and naysayers are the fuel, where some retreat, those with defiant leaf go even farther and harder. 2017 was a year at Under Armour where we hit the ball in the water twice. We fell in the downhill and we injured our knee. 
our company took a hit. And frankly, as chairman and CEO, I too took a hit. So what do we do at Under Armour? What are we doing at Under Armour? We stayed in the arena and we still swing. You see, we have defiant belief. It actually defines us, our team and our athletes. We remain ever humble and always hungry and knowing that the number one lesson about the power of perseverance, because the easiest things to do is usually just to exit that arena. Well, I can tell you, we've been in business for 22 years. We've been a public company for 13 of those years. And in that time, we've gone through some pretty wild swings. We've been heralded and we've been panned. Welcome to the arena. You can stand on the sideline or you can pick up a sword and you too can be a gladiator. In 2017, we took a much needed breath and reflected. We leaned in and we embraced and took the opportunity to learn and we'll be better, so much better because. And one of the best pieces of advice that I got during that time was from frankly one of the greatest entrepreneurs on the planet who embraces the notion of continuous learning. And it was an event where I had the opportunity to spend some time with Jeff Bezos. And I asked him for the person who'd been on the cover of Time Magazine as the person of the year in 1999, how for so long have you endured so much of the pain or the punishment of that people coming at you? And there's no one who's gonna feel sorry for Jeff Bezos, but it's not nice when people don't say nice things. And the advice that he gave me was something that surprised me, frankly, because it was just so simple. What he said to me was, he said, the first thing that I do when I'm critiqued is I ask myself if they're right. Think about that. That's a really important question, whether the answer is a yes or a no. The most important thing is that you learn and how you learn by asking that question in the first place. Are they right? The parents, the coaches, the bosses, or just the critics, are they right? And usually that answer will probably be no. But you look for the opportunity to take the lesson and move forward. What rough chapters in your life do is strip everything down and reveal your defiant belief. Do the critics, the naysayers, and obstacles stop you or do they fuel you? Are you willing to learn the hard lessons? I'll tell you, Under Armour is in the arena, and we've got the scars to prove it. But we stand, we learn, we adapt, we fight, and we believe. That sounds like Team Fuqua. We continue to find inspiration in the things that got us started, and that is our passion. Passion is not an emotion, it's not a hashtag, it's a, it's a true feeling. It's something that fuels us every single day because passion for each other as teammates, passion for our work and the products that we make, passion for the inspiration that we give to our consumers, our customers, the little boys and girls that pick up or put on an Under Armour product and say, I feel like I can now do anything. That empowerment is what fuels us. Passion is what turned the original idea into a challenger, and that challenger became one of the biggest, baddest brands in the world. But we're not done, and it's not God-given. But we are certainly still learning, and we will fight every day. Entrepreneurship, defiant belief, and passion must be earned every single day. And these should always remain works in progress for all of us. Every single day, we put one foot in front of the other. We look for new solutions to old problems. We generate ideas and we act on them. We bear the risk. We create products that make you better. We make the communities that we live in better, standing tall for fairness and inclusivity. This is our purpose. And I've always looked at Under Armour kind of like a book. And we've now written the first few chapters. And like great books are like great stories. And our job is managing the beginning, the middle, and the end. And I've got to admit, there's a little part comedy, there's a bit of tragedy, and there's a lot of drama. But there's certainly many more chapters to write, just like your own chapters, your own stories. And today, you begin writing your own stories. 
You are the leading edge of this next generation and one that's poised to be a great one. You are exceedingly demanding of this world and you should be. You expect it to be fair and efficient. You expect it to be more connected. You expect it to be more equitable and more inclusive. You expect progress. You expect the world to become a better place because these expectations are a big part of what makes you great. But you also have skin in this game. With those expectations come real responsibilities. With this degree comes real responsibilities. And in order to make the world more fair, more efficient, more connected, more equitable, and more inclusive, to make it a better place, you individually and collectively bear the responsibility and the risk of making it better. That's your job. In order to demand greatness, you must produce it as well. You must hold yourself to the same standard that you seek. To much that is given or earned, much is expected. And that greatness expands beyond your given livelihood, no matter what you do. Fortune 500 company, starting your own business, it must be done with a higher purpose, that wildly ambitious goals in mind. That belief that things can be changed, that things can just flat out be made better. Because our nation, our world really, is starved for strong, positive leadership, and they will be looking at you. They will call on you to lead with entrepreneurship, a defiant belief, and with passion. They will call on you to be the innovators, the makers, and the job creators. They will look to you to call out discrimination, to speak out about climate change, racism, and sexism. They will look to you to call out for civility, love, compassion, and respect. They will look to you to give back. They will look to you to persevere. You are here right now at this very moment you are entering the arena you are no longer the leaders of tomorrow you are the leaders of today this is the challenge more simply this is your greatest opportunity grab it take it seize it this is your moment and one last thing do me a favor this summer and all the summers that follow, when you're driving down the street, when you're on your bike, when you're going for a run, seek out and stop by those lemonade stands. Keep yourselves humble. Keep yourselves hungry and always, always continue to learn. Have those conversations with those young ones because after all, those little ones that you'll be speaking with, those kids are, will one day be sharing this arena with you. Graduates, I wish you the very best. I wish you luck to each and every one of you, and I now leave you with three words that I never ever thought that I would say. Go Blue Devils. Good luck. <laughs>